Would the children like to come? <laughs> Actually, I think the choir beat you all up here. <laughs> And speaking of which, I need you all to stand up. Choir and the children. Now, do you have wings? No! No, how come you don't have wings? Like flying squirrels and stuff, okay. Are you sure you don't have wings? Yeah! Does God have wings? No, he does. Maybe he can fly. We don't know. That's the issue. So we're going to pretend like we have wings today, and we're going to dink, we're going to do the chicken dance. Okay. Now I don't have. Okay. <laughs> this was a good idea on paper. <laughs> so I get down here so I can see you a little better. I don't have any music. Are you ready? Da 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 now, does, does that make you a chicken? No. Are you sure? Yeah! Okay. You may sit down, those in the choir. You see, sometimes we can act like something, but it doesn't mean it makes us that way. We can act like a chicken. Doesn't make us a chicken. What's important is that we know who God is and that we trust him in our heart. And in the Psalms, the Psalms are a hymnal. In the Psalms, the 91st Psalm, it says, under his wings, meaning God, under his wings, we will find refuge. Now, refuge means safety. Isn't it nice when the times get difficult if you're outside and there's a thunderstorm coming up or whatever to run to mom and dad to run into the house yes you do okay yeah that's a good idea so it's great when we have mom and dad around to protect us when we can be in their presence yes alexander Okay, well, whenever we're in kinds of trouble like that and we have storms around us and all of those kinds of things, it's really nice to have somebody there to protect us. And even if nobody is around, God is there with us and we have our safety in him. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for the children and for the choir who uh, had a little fun this morning and danced the chicken dance. And we don't have wings, but you do. And under your wings, we safely abide forever. Bless the children this day. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. It's time for them to go back. <laughs> Thank you, choir. If you have your Bible, I'd invite you to turn as we read from Psalm 91. The Psalms are, are the hymnal of the early church, the, the hymnal of the Old Testament. Not only are they the hymnal, but they are God's word itself, and so they have a double blessing to us. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness 
nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hands, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tents. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May God's blessing be added to the reading and the hearing of his word. a little fun with the children in the choir as we sang the chicken dance or dance the chicken dance. I kind of tried to bring that lyric there. Maybe I should have had the rest of you do that as well. I'm not sure. We have a tendency in our society to anthropomorphize God. We want him to look like us, to sound like us, to act like us, when the truth is we don't know what God looks like. In fact, Jesus tells us that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But the beauty of this passage of scripture, this psalm, strengthens us in our faith. How great and wonderful it is to be under God's care. To be loved by him, to be cared for by him, to be watched over by him. I had an ideal life as a child in many ways. You went out the front door of our house and you turned right and you were heading into town. You came out the front door of our house and turned left and you were soon out of town. We were the next to the last house in town. You went out the back door and there was the creek. Ideal life, that's what I said. When I went down to the farm as a eight-year-old, a farm that had just sold, I didn't realize who had bought it. That, that meant nothing to me. I did not know who Amish people were or what that meant. I was interested in selling a subscription to a newspaper. So I went down there when the new family moved in and I knocked on their door and asked them if they were interested in buying a newspaper, paper, which they were not. But I struck up a conversation with this young farmer and his wife, and he says to me, are you interested in a job? And I said, doing what? He said, I need help milking. Sure, I was interested in a job. Well, let me tell you, I'm thinking we're sticking those milkers on those. Uh, That's not how that worked, it was by this. And at first, he had 12 cows that we were milking. I would milk one till he milked 11. <laughs> I got a little better over, over time, and I could finally get up where I was doing five to his seven. I never could quite match him. But I learned so much there in my little time that I had on the farm. Outside the house, not far away from the house, was a building that was made into a small chicken house. It had a fenced-in yard where the chickens could come out and and be safe in the daytime. There was a little ramp that went up to an open door that they could go inside and, and be there. And I remember very clearly one day in the middle of the summer when the wind suddenly blew up a gust. You know how when you see the leaves turn inside out, you're seeing the underside of the leaf instead of the top side of the leaf. And all these chickens and some small, we always called them peepees, were out there and mama spread her wings. And those little chicks ran right underneath. They knew that they were safe there. 
In fact, a few years ago, when one of the when the volcano out of Mount St. Helens blew its top, and I tried to find this picture, but I couldn't. There was a, after the aftermath of that, they went up and they found some kind of a fowl. It wasn't a chicken, but some kind of a fowl who had spread her wings for her chicks to come underneath. She died, but when they moved her body, all of her chicks were still alive under his wings. How precious it is for you and I when we have trouble or difficulty in our life to know that we can go to the Lord and he spreads his proverbial wings over us and he shields us and he protects us and he keeps all evil away from us because of his great love for us. What a beautiful picture that is to run underneath the ever spread wings of God and to find refuge there. How delightful it is to know when we're in time of difficulty. You know, I was okay this week when I went to have that uh, nuclear stress test done. I wasn't sure whether I'd glow in the dark when I was done. I, I, it didn't happen. But they give you this IV and they are, they're doing an EKG and all that sort of thing. And they tell you your heart's going to run fast and you'll get short of breath. I can do walk the steps and do that. I mean, you know, that's... So all of that was done, and then, you know, finally I'm allowed to eat something. That's the hard part of this test. You're not allowed to eat or drink any. Well, you can drink water, but coffee? No coffee? So then they send you off, and you can do that. And then they came and told me, now we're going to take you to the tube, and we're going to run you through the tube, and we're going to take some pictures. And I don't know what the tube looks like. I've been in those tubes before. And when you're my size kind of guy, you pretty much fill up the tube. So I'm thinking, I hope I can make it through this tube thing. Well, thankfully, the tube was only about as wide as an inner tube. And so, you know, 90% of you are sticking out, and I felt a little better about that. But that was easy. They said, just relax, put your hands above your head, so on. They woke me up 10 minutes later to tell me that I was done. I figured I might as well take advantage of this. But you know, when I'm heading back the hallway with this nurse, I'm praying the whole time, Lord, I don't know whether I can do this tube. Lord, I'm not sure whether I, because I'm thinking it's one of them, you know, seven foot long jobs that you have to climb in and you're, you know, the, the ceiling of it's about an inch away from your nose and all of those kind of things. The Lord is good. I didn't have to do all of that this time. God is always protecting us. When we ask for it and then when we don't ask for it, he is always watching over us and caring for us. And the psalmist here uses some references that I think I need to explain a little bit for you. He talks about he will save you from the fowler's snare. The way that they captured birds in the day was by using a snare. That's what a fowler is, someone who's a bird hunter. They didn't have shotguns like we would use today. They used a snare, a little string on the ground with a little uh, loop in it. And when the bird went, came for the food that was there, they could capture the bird in that fowler's snare. He saves us from the traps of life. And I want to tell you, I, I've never seen a fowler's snare, but I've seen a lot of traps in life, and so have you. You've seen it every time you've turned on your television, or especially when you turn on the internet. There are lots of traps there. I don't do very much on Facebook except occasionally wish people a happy birthday, that sort of thing. But you know, you can just occupy time. You begin looking at something there and you say, happy birthday, you know, may the Lord bless you this day. And you do that two or three or four times or whatever. And you page down through to see what's happening in the life of your friends or family or whatever. Next thing you know, a couple hours have gone by. It's a trap. There are lots of traps for us in our society and we get caught up in them all the time. He will save you from the fowler's snare. Who was the fowler for us? 
Satan, right? Satan is always wanting to catch us. He's always wanting to distract us. He wants us to take our gaze off of Jesus and put our gaze on something else. And anything else who's not Jesus is wrong. And then he says he will be our shield and our rampart. Now, I think we can understand what a shield is. That someone who was carrying a sword would have a shield to protect themselves. The Lord is our protector. But what in the world is a rampart? Up on top of walled cities, they would have a pathway that would go the whole way around up on top of the wall. And on, at the one edge, then there was a... A, a bit of a wall that was out there, and this whole area was called the rampart. In other words, he's always watching over us. He will be our shield and our rampart. He's watching out for us. When you're on top of that hill, you can see everything. When I was a kid, I gathered some lumber. <laughs> Not exactly. I mean, what are you finding floating down the creek? Some sticks and pieces of board and all that sort of thing. And it was important for me. I was going to build a fort up in the, in the woods. And so I went up the woods, and I only had enough nails to put one nail on each board in the tree to make my ladder. So you had to, you had, I had to learn that you had to hit both feet on the same side at the same time. Otherwise... Yeah, yeah, you can you can see the problem there. So I, I I built my ladder up there and I laid my joists down that you know they were spaced about every four feet, <laughs> and I nailed some boards on over the top. And my dad came up there hunting me one day, and he couldn't find me. I had seen him the whole way from the back door until he got to me, and he finally called out my name and I answered him and I was right above him. And he said, what are you doing up there? I said, watching you. <laughs> he said, how high up is your, your platform? I said, I don't know. He said, we're going to find out. So we went and got some string, and he put a, a, you know, a washer on one end, and I dropped it down there and marked the string, and then later we measured. It was just a little bit over 70 feet in the air. That was the last time I was allowed to go up on time. <laughs> watching over he watches over us he is our shield and our rampart and then at towards the end of this psalm and many of you love this in verse 11 he says he will appoint his angels to watch over you to guard you in all of your ways it's the concept of the guardian angel to watch over us because satan never lets us alone does he I will occasionally get ready to leave the office and I'll, and I'll look at Linda and I'll say, I'm going to do something the devil never did. I'm going to leave you. He never leaves us alone, does he? He's always there with temptation, coming after us, coming after us, coming after us. You know what the opposite of Satan is? Tell me. Actually, the opposite of Satan is Michael, the archangel of God. I wish I could tell you that my mom and dad named me after Michael the archangel. They did not. I was named after a, a guy they saw in a film. You know, there were cowboy movies at one era, and then for a while, then there were lumberjack movies. And I was named after the lumberjack, a fictional lumberjack on a piece of celluloid. The biggest guy in the lumberjack camp was always named Big Mike. And that's how I got my name. Michael the Archangel watches over us. He sends his angels out to guard us and watch us. They know every moment what it is that we are doing. We have never seen them to our knowledge. Although in Hebrews it tells us, beware of entertaining strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. Jesus wants us to be with him. He wants us to be calling out his name. In this 91st Psalm, it says that he will protect us and we will abide with him. Jesus says in John chapter 15, abide with me 
and I will abide with you. You know, there have been times in my life when it's been really nice to have a companion through certain things. When you're in trouble, you're um, walking in a, a dark place at night and it's not so good or whatever. It's nice to have somebody else to be with you. I always figured I'm somebody's shield in that moment because they're, they're going to shoot the big guy first. Maybe. But it's nice to have that companionship. But you know, sometimes we're all alone. But I want you to understand if you've trusted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you're never alone. We may not see our angel around us. We may not understand that at that moment, but the Lord is with us. He watches over us. He is our shield. He is our rampart. He keeps us from the fowler's snare. He has appointed his angels to watch over us, to guard us in all our ways. Quite a number of years ago when I pastored at the Pembroke Church, there was a husband and a wife named Jim and Nancy. And we were getting ready for a big Christmas program and Nancy had a solo in the, in the Christmas program and it came the night of dress rehearsal and, and Nancy wasn't there and everyone knew that was peculiar. She didn't miss those kinds of things. And so after it was over, I called out to their home and to find out that Nancy had had a heart attack that afternoon and was now in the hospital. When visited her, she was going to be okay. She missed the program, but, you know, there was the next year. So in the process of this, about 10 days before Christmas, you know, she's recovering and comes home and all of those kinds of things. And two or three days after Christmas, she had to go back and see the cardiologist. Well, her husband drove her. She was not yet allowed to drive. Now listen to this. When they got to the cardiologist's office, the cardiologist looked at her husband and said, when was the last time you had a stress test? He said, oh, I've never had one. He said, you have, a, you have 30 minutes? We'll hook you up and put you on the treadmill right now. They hooked him up and put him on the treadmill and they took him right off the treadmill via ambulance to the hospital to do quintuple bypass the next day. The doctor had told him, had you not had that stress test and continued on with life, you'd have had a Widowmaker's heart attack. Five blockages. So I went to see him at the hospital before they took him into surgery, like I like to do, and, and I prayed with him. And, you know, he come out of that surgery, you're in intensive care for a little while, and he has, a, you know, the, the ventilation tube in, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm praying with him, holding his hand. And, and finally, when a couple of days later, when they take the vent out, he says to me, Pastor Mike, thanks for being with me during the surgery. And I said... I was with your family. He said, no, you were sitting right there beside me in the operating room holding my hand. He said, I saw you. And I said, Jim, I assure you, I was not sitting in that operating room holding your hand. He said, well, then there's an angel who looks just like you. Then not that a scary thought? <laughs> and I said, Jim, it wasn't me. It was the Lord who was watching over you. And as, after he recovered, I went to visit both of them, and I looked at Nancy, and I said, do you realize your heart attack saved your husband's life? He'd have never gone for, to the cardiologist had he not needed to take her there. God watches over us. Sometimes in ways that are immediately obvious to us and many times in ways that we cannot see now. But he sees. He appoints his angels to watch over us and to guard us in all of our ways. He protects us from the fowler's snare. He is our shield and our rampart. What a beautiful picture this psalm is. As God spreads his wings. And we, as those little chicks, run right underneath and are cared for and are protected. 
under his wings. I don't know whether God has wings or not. I suspect not. But what a beautiful picture the psalmist gives us in this psalm under his wings. I am safely abiding. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we're thankful this day that you protect us and watch over us in ways that we know and certainly in ways that we don't know. We're grateful that you have appointed an angel to watch over us and he or watches over us all the time. Oh Lord, we are so grateful that you are our shield and our rampart. You are our protector. You are the one who appoints a guardian angel. You are the one who spread your wings to give us refuge. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, guess what our final hymn is? Under his wings, you guessed. Stand with me as we sing.